This is John. I'm a solutions engineer here at Squid. Today I'm going to be talking about different ways to use custom styles in our Squid pages. And there's a, there's a, a few different ways to do it. We have, uh, using our custom resources tab here, we have uh, a few different ways to add CSS to a page. So keeping in mind, whenever you add CSS to a Squid page, it's only being used on that one particular page. So if you have something that you want to actually span over, over a bunch of pages, there's some specific ways to do that. But every time you're adding a resource, that's, you're only adding it for the one page. So looking at the resources, we have three different types of CSS resources that we can add. The first is an inline, and what that does is basically takes, it's the same thing as writing CSS into just an HTML page. It just takes the CSS that you write and it inserts it at the very end of all the other CSS and includes in JavaScript so that uh, it overrides whatever the default CSS is. Now, this is the easiest, quickest way to make sort of one-off changes, um, but it also is not very scalable. You're, you're stuck to just having it on this page. You can't reuse it. Um, it's only valid for this one page. Now, uh, static resources. Static resources are, um, you can essentially make a CSS file and upload it as a, st as a static resource. And when you do this, it allows you to use it in multiple pages. But you still have to add a new resource uh, on each page that you want to include those styles on. And so, uh, and the last one is an external resource. And so what this is, is, is um, primarily we've seen it used for like jQuery UI themes. But if you had uh, some externally hosted uh, style that you wanted to use that was valid for a squid page, you could certainly use a CSS, an external CSS resource to do that. So let's do our first example. This, by the way, is our contact page that I just copied from our page repository. So I just pulled it straight out. But the best place to see some of the changes is in something that has a lot of content. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try a, uh, an inline resource here. We'll just give it a name, custom. And, well, let's look at our page first. So this is what our page looks like by default. And I have changed this top piece here to be emergency contact. And so say, say we have some information here for, this, uh, for our, our contact, and we want to actually say, okay, now this is their, so their mobile phone is actually their emergency contact. So I'm going to pull this up here very slowly, in theory. All right, so we're changing this from just a basic info to emergency contacts. So I already changed this uh, section title. But we want it to stick out a little more, because right now it just sort of blends into the page. So we'll want it to be something that's very obvious to the user, uh, that it's the emergency contact information and that they can get to it quickly. So what I'm going to do is I have some custom CSS here that I've written. And I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what, what it does. And so, um, before actually before I do that, what I'm going to do is sh show you how the easiest way to get at some of the styles that are currently uh, that are currently shown for a page. So what I typically do is we use primarily Chrome as our as our browser. And what I'll do if I want to change something is I'll right click on it. So I'm going to start with this this header here. I'm going to right click on it and then I'm going to choose Inspect Element. And what that does is it brings up this Developer Console, and the Developer Console will show you all of the styles that this current selection has. So right now, um, we see the whole tree that this is nested into. And so this is the one we want. So this says emergency contact down here on the bottom. And what I want to do is I want to change this to red. And so I could, I could change it over here because I can see this is where it's getting its blue color from. And anything that's inherited that's not being used is going to be, is going to be crossed out like this down here. But say I want to change this to, uh, to red. So I will actually just do this, just change it to red. But you notice that it changed it for all of them. I don't want to change it for all of them. I only want to change it for the, the first one. So I'm going to undo that. Actually, I'm going to refresh the page because I should have just hit escape. And now for this one element, I'm going to say color red. So now it's just this one. Okay, but how do I do that in CSS? How do I how do I get at the thing this this first one, um, and and only show it uh, in show it in red? So I've already kind of figured out how um, which element I want. 
but now I need to figure out how to actually reference it. So the way that we do that, everything that we, uh, everything within Squid has a particular class, and then all of its parents typically have a specific classes as well. So this one is called um, NX Basic Field Editor Section Header. So it's kind of broken down uh, to be somewhat semantic just to show you. It's in the basic field editor, and it's a section, and then a header for the section. So what I'm going to do is this CSS that I copied. Let me explain what it's doing. So what I want to do is, is I, want to, I actually want to get at the first column. So that's where this first child comes from. And then I want to get the first section in that first column. So that's this first section wrapper. That's just basically the thing that wraps around this section. And then I want to pull it in uh, to the header. This is the actual element that we want to, we want to edit. And then I'm going to turn it to red. Then I have some other stuff for the backgrounds for the other pieces as well. So let's just go ahead and copy that into our inline style. So now just paste that in here real quick and then I'll save it. And then we can take a look at what it did. So now when I refresh the page, so the emergency contact now has the uh, the red background that we wanted. So that one's pretty much good to go. So that's this is an inline that's the way you would use an inline style. So if I just want to make a quick one-off change, I, I, I'm only going to use it on this page, and I'll, or if I want to just try something out really quickly, inline styles are the way to go. So say that I want to reuse this over and over on a couple different pages. What I'm going to do is change it to a static resource. And there's been a little bit of confusion on how to use these static resources. Um, so I want to clear that up a little bit right now. So the static resource that I'm going to use is a, a straight CSS file. So we'll look at it right here. So it's called demo CSS, and it's actually just a CSS file by itself. Sometimes static resources that you upload will be zips. Um, there'll be a zip file, and then inside the zip will be folders and other files. And so you can see that this one, though, is just straight CSS. And so sometimes for instances where you're only using a, a, a file that is the direct uh, element that you want, is, is the actual file you want, all you need to put in is the resource name. So if I put in demo CSS, this will work now. If you're, the only time you ever want to use namespace is if you're actually referring to something that's in, uh, that's in a managed package. That's why it would have a namespace. But otherwise, namespace should basically always be blank. And a file path, the file path is how you get at some of the files that would be within a zipped static resource. So um, this, for instance, obviously is just one single file, but if I had a file that, or if I had a folder inside this that was CSS and I had JavaScript as well, I would say uh, CSS slash uh, demo CSS dot CSS. So I'm actually getting at the file uh, and then pulling it out of that zip, but since we only have just the one file, we don't need that. And then the, the cache resource location just makes it so it loads a little bit quicker. So now if I save this, we can take a look. And it, this will stay exactly the same, basically, because it's the demo CSS file has the same, uh, the, the same CSS. So there we go. So now we're using our static resource. And it's pulling in all the same CSS. And now we can reuse it on different pages if we wanted to. So the final way to uh, pull in some custom styles is to use this external. So an external resource, like we said, is, is typically used if you're wanting to pull something in for maybe a CDN or you're wanting to use a jQuery theme um, and do that. So let's, I'll open up the jQuery uh, theme roller here. Anybody have any particular theme that, that, that jumps out of them? Let's do something that looks a little bit. Left frog? Yeah. All right, left frog it is. All right, so so this one we can see totally changes just about everything for the jQuery UI. The place where you're going to see it the most in Squid is the tab set component um, because that's basically just it's leveraging the tab set from, from jQuery UI. There are some other places where you will have to completely write the, the styles yourself to make it come in line with the, this, this theme. But this is really used as a great starting point. So if you want to completely overhaul what Squid looks like, uh, a jQuery UI theme is actually a good place to start. So I scroll to the bottom of the page here, and I'm, I'm just at jQueryUI.com slash steamroller. I can get to this CDN code. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this. I'm going to copy it. But notice this is for the smoothness theme. So I'm going to open up another window. I'll paste it in here. 
So this is for smoothness. But now if I change this to Le Frog or Le Forge, Le Frog, now we can see it tweaked a little bit and it changed. And so this is what we want. So I'm going to copy this and pull it over here to our resource URL. So now if I save this, we should see it, right? So the reason this isn't actually loading up is because right now we're behind HTTPS. And so this needs to be a secure, um, it needs to be an HTTPS link as well, and then it should work. So I change that, save it. Now we should see left frog. Or use Safari. Nope, no, that's not an option. So we can see, uh, <laughs> well, Safari, that just means it's less secure, right? Because it's loading unsecured content and pulling it in. <laughs> you were just trying to start a browser war? I gotcha. So we can see it changed a lot of stuff. Um, obviously, the text color changed. And so what we would need to do to really make this work is we'd have to pull through and, and change all of the different pieces um, to, to conform to whatever we want the style to be. So if I, if I come over here, I'm going to change this to, um, let's see, what's another one? There's one called black tie. So I'll do that one. So if I change this to black tie, it won't be quite as drastic. And we can see that it's really a good starting point. And you can see that it basically works as it is because it's kind of, it, it, it's similar, but it still changes um, it still changes the base uh, colors and everything. So we can see it's changing all the buttons and it's changing all the tabs, but it still it still looks it looks different, but it, it still works. So the external CSS resource is really a good way to kind of get started if you want to really take your squid pages in a different direction. Now, typically, this happens when people want to totally throw away the uh, the, U, the standard Salesforce UI, so they'll actually kill the header and then um, the sidebar and everything too, and the pages will just be loaded by themselves. So now, another thing to uh, another method to keep in mind is that sometimes when you're using uh, pages within a portal or a community, you want to completely uh, customize um, the branding. You want to completely you want to have a, a header and a footer maybe that you reuse over and over. You want to have some of the logout stuff, and so what you actually need to do for, for that is, is you want you need to build a Visual Force page and then stick your Squid page inside it. So I'll show you an example of where one place where we're doing that. So this is our Squid package releases pages. It's just squidify.com/squid-releases, and you can see this all down here is all Squid, but then around it is just a regular. This is our our regular website theme essentially. So this is a template that I've built. And it wraps every one of our pages so that they all have the, the common header, the common footer. So the way we do that is this is this is the page itself. So this squid page is nothing um, is it, nothing fancy. It's basically just a table with some custom uh, some custom row actions in it. It's so all preview it just to show you what it looks like. And so it's just it's just a normal page. But now what we need to do is actually pull in use our Visual Force component. So our squid Visual Force page component will actually allow us to pull in. Um, this squid public site page. So now all you basically need to do is, is put in the page name and all this other stuff is just to help it fit within the styles. But you could essentially have the entire page be this. So you just have your template set and then you have your squid page and it would it would work fine. So I'm going to cancel that but but that's really that's really all you have to do to be able to pull in a custom theme, uh, a custom template, and wrap it in Visual Force. Because and and typically, like I said, that the place where that's most useful is in when you're really wanting to customize a, a portal or a community. You can use it there uh, to to pull it in and to really make it look look nothing like Squid and and to make it look nothing like Salesforce as well. So I think that's pretty much it. Do we have any questions from the peanut gallery here? About uh. What if I wanted to use this page assignment on that uh, squid squid page? On the squid squid page? On, on the squid page component. That's pretty easy, right? If you wanted to use a, a page assignment for what? For this? Yeah. Share different things to different use different user profiles. Like a portal user, different portal user types or something. I, I can answer that question. Yeah, why don't you answer the question? Okay. Um you want to just do uh and if you, you would get rid of the um, the, the page property 
and you would add an a action type property and an object type property instead. Um, within, within this squid, within this here? Yeah. And, and then it would reference your page assignment instead of directly referencing a page. So it, it's up to you whether you want to use a page assignment, if you want more flexibility, or if you know I'm always going to use this page, which is our case, this is this is totally fine to do. Uh, if you, you, so there's an action type property? Yeah. And so you would do like view slash edit. Mm -hmm. And then, actually it would be tab, <laughs> just to make it, yeah, it would be, be tab. And then uh, object type would be uh, C or whatever. Sure. So what this is basically going to do is, is it's going to reference the the page assignment that you've already created to, and then it's going to serve the the page that you want based on who's viewing it, right? Yeah, or whatever your property. Or whatever, yeah. So whatever conditions you set up to customize that experience, right? Okay. So that's what it would be like. That's what it looks like. So not not a ton of difference there, but uh, but some dramatically you can serve dramatically different content um, if you want to. So that's some pretty incredible flexibility. How would I would how would you if you wanted to have um, like CSS to apply to every single page in your app and not have to rewrite it on every page? How would you do that? Well, you'd actually you, you would do it with a custom module, and so you can build. Uh, there we have some some information on building a custom module in our in our uh, dev guide here. So if I go to Squidify.com, I go to our dev guide. Creating a custom module. So basically, a module allows you to prepackage certain um, files. So you can prepackage the builders for your components. You can prepackage the actual component code itself, the literal JavaScript. And then you can also package up the CSS, any custom CSS that you want to have. And basically, that consists of a module. And so, a module, as long as everything is named properly, Squid will automatically pull in modules. Um, that have been included. So you essentially have to just follow these steps to register your module with Squid. And then your new custom components will show up in, in the component library, but then you're also, your CSS will be used by default. So good question, Zach. All right, so one thing that Jay just brought up was uh, um, we, in, our, in our Summer 13 release, we added the ability to uh, assign custom IDs and classes to all of our elements. And uh, you can see that I haven't even used that yet since I, I didn't even include it on my talk. But if we go to this profile, this tab, and we go to advanced, we can see that I've, I can give this tab a unique ID. So if I say, uh, let's say profile tab, now what I can do is I can come over into uh, my resource. I'm going to pull this. Actually, I'll just make it. And then I will say profile. This name doesn't really matter, but if you have if you have a bunch of them, it helps to have you know something that's clear. So and then I would just say profile tab, and I'll just change the the font color to yellow. And we can see it worked perfectly. <laughs> so what it did was it actually <laughs> So this is the best practice is to use the lightest no, not really. Um, so, so what this did is that everything within this tab, um, basically all of the text that had no um, color directly set to it, it everything inherited this yellow color, which is obviously horrible to look at. But it at least illustrates the point that you now have the ability for basically anything that should take a style, you're able to give it now. If you click on the advanced settings over here, you're able to give it a unique ID. Um, and some of them even have classes as well. I believe, was it the tables that have classes? Yeah. So if I go to this table, I can give it a custom class right there. So that's really helpful, really uh, really easy to get. It makes it really easy to get at specific elements. You don't have to know all the crazy um, different pseudo classes and things that you would have to use to get at um, you know, the first or last or third element in, in, a, in a list. Um, this will let you to get right at 
a particular object or particular element on the page and uh, give it a specific style. So there you go.